like, listen, this is, I want, I, you see how I'm looking right now? Like, I'm fresh out of my sleep. Just, just to, like, show y'all, like, to show y'all, like, this is the fucking truth of what I'm saying. It's about the Brooklyn Steel. Like, yo, yesterday was the worst experience ever. Ever. First of all, it's I had bought. First of all, it started with I bought my ticket September third, right? And around the time when I bought my ticket, like all you needed was proof of vaccine that you, or a negative COVID nineteen test. And uh, but then now that this mandatory shit happened or whatever, now um. Now, all of a sudden, they have switched up and changed up the rules and say that you had to be fully vaccinated and you had to have your second dose two weeks before the concert. First of all, they changed that rule November 2nd. Okay? So, anyway. So, like I was saying. So, anyway. So, then I got to the concert, you know, because, like, I feel like, okay, fine. If I had bought my ticket, you know, a week ago, then whatever. You know, but because I bought my ticket September 3rd or whatever before all of that, that they should let me in. But they didn't let me in, nor did they care to refund me or whatever. So, but like I, said, I went to the concert for my niece. My niece was able to get signed, so I'm just like, you know what, I'm just going to take it. As a loss, we'll take the forty-two dollars as a fucking loss, you know. Because first of all, I bought those tickets for my niece, and it was for her to have a good time. So I was like, "Fuck it, I'm just going to take it as a loss." But excuse the language. Any child that's watching this, do not curse. I'm just upset, but don't don't curse. I'm not. But anyway, so um. Yeah, so, like, I, so that wasn't even for us. So then I'm like, you know, so I was just finally just, was going to take it as a loss. So I'm like, you know what, let me go get some coffee because it's, it's cold. First of all, it's cold. Y'all have me outside in the cold. So I'm like, let me go get some coffee. Two blocks going to get some coffee, right? Why there was a guy that said, yo, how much? How much? And I'm like, yo. I'm like, zero. Because I'm not what you think I am. You know, and I just kept walking. Then I get back to the cop. You know, I go to the place and let them know. I'm like, yo, do you have 14-year-olds? 14-year-olds that go into this concert... 14 year olds and up the block I almost got kidnapped snatched up and yet the, and they're not caring they're laughing at me or whatever and it was so funny is that like an hour later two dudes two pips drove up to me in front of the concert trying to talk to me like oh you want to get in my car you know we live right across the street in the project because it's right next to a project oh we live right across the street from the projects. Do you want to, you know, oh, come in the car, come in the car, come in the car. Yo, could you imagine, I'm a 34-year-old woman. Could you imagine if a 14-year-old kid that has nowhere, didn't have no money to get home, the train station is literally a 20-minute walk from the concert. So, could you imagine a 14-year-old that, you know, wants to, you know, just wanted to get home so bad and didn't feel like doing that walk, and then two sh grown-ups, whatever, are like, yo, hey, I'll, I'll take you to the train station. Two grown-ass fucking old-ass men. Oh, I'll take you to the train station. Like, could you imagine that? And that 14-year-old gets in that car. 
And the next thing you know, they're taking her somewhere or him. Because nowadays, you know, it's stereotypic to just say, oh, females as victims. No, there's male sex traffic victims too. So a female or a male. You know, imagine that. And now next, you know, they're two blocks up the way, prostitute. And then this kid is, and then somebody's parent is like, yo, why my kid never got home? Either the kid is going to wind up dead. Or, because, listen, first of all, the gas station is literally, it took me 10 minutes to get to the gas station. 10 minutes to get to the gas station. Like, the nearest stores are literally like a 10-minute walk. You literally have to walk 10 minutes to get to a fucking society. Like, this place is... This is not a safe place for a venue, especially a venue for teenagers. Not. So, I this video is about the Brooklyn Steel's locate, like their location is not safe. I don't even care about the shiesty want to freaking change up your rules one last minute and now y'all, you know, oh, so try to make excuses to why y'all don't want to refund nobody because y'all know y'all done sold these tickets way before the mandatory thing. And then you have people, you know that there's people that done bought their tickets way before this mandatory thing. And then y'all want to last minute be like, oh, you can't come in or whatever. And then want to use the new rules as a fucking excuse. Because what it is, is that y'all ain't supposed to have all these fucking people in their concert to begin with. So y'all done made up this change as fucking new rule. Y'all done made some new rules or whatever. So... Y'all can, so the place wouldn't be per, packed and y'all can have the right amount of numbers for your little fucking garage location. Yeah, it's like, the concert is literally, literally in a truck garage, okay? This is, this is a place for trucks. And we all know what trucks are known for. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they were part of the prostitution rink. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually have a fucking business with the pimps. Because it's so crazy how the pimps know to come to the front of their freaking concerts to go pick up people. And it's like, my spirit can't sleep. Like, this happened last night. And yet, I'm waking up and my, I'm still upset. And you know, like I said, this goes to show how much I care about money. I'm not upset about the refund. I'm more upset that the area and that this is a place for teenagers. This is why I feel like why God didn't let me get inside. Because he, I think that, yo, he really wants me to bring awareness to this place. Like, I feel like this place is doing some crazy, shiesty business. And most important, shiesty business on the life of children, teenagers. So, listen, listen, please, please, yo, anybody that's going to that concert, any teenager that go to that concert, please, please, please let them watch this video. Please let your parents watch this video. And tell them, see, like, this is a 34-year-old woman and she is telling you what happened. Mom, please, I need cab money. I need money to take a cab afterwards. Please give me money to take a cab. I'm going to need cab money. Or at least come with me, Mom, and wait for me outside. Like I did with my niece. I didn't care. Three hours in the damn cold did not care. I was not letting nothing happen to my niece. I was not. I 
I'm fucking, I feel so sick right now and cold. Because like I said, I was out there for three hours. So I'm like coming across a cold, but. But no, please, please, please. Anyone that goes to that Brooklyn still, excuse me. See, like I said, I'm, I'm, this is, this is how y'all know I am so like telling the truth, man, like. Anybody go to that Brooklyn Steel concert or anybody go to the Brooklyn Steel, please have cab money. Please. And please do not walk to the nearest gas station. Because you may not be as lucky as I was and able to come back. Because that's another thing. Imagine I did get kidnapped. A 34 year old, I got snatched up or whatever. Got held at gunpoint in the. In a shiesty area, right? I got hell at gunpoint. My niece come out and she gonna be like, where's my auntie? And they wouldn't even know what the hell happened to me. Because they don't even have police officers waiting outside. You know, like at a regular concert, they have police outside the building. To make sure that everybody made it to the train. Station. They don't even have that. So, guys, watch out, man. Watch out. Just watch out, yo, like. Brooklyn Steel and Brooklyn Steel, you should be a damn shame of yourself. Worrying more about money than the lives of these children. Y'all know that that area that y'all have is not safe. But y'all so busy wanting the money more than care about these children's safety. And y'all have more than enough money, especially y'all ripping people off. Like y'all rip me off. So y'all have more than enough money. Because I'm sure I wasn't the only person that done bought a ticket before his time and that y'all fuck that y'all turned around and canceled. So y'all have more than enough money to have better security. And no, I'm not going to stop until y'all have better security. This is not the last of me. Because I am a victim of sex trafficking. And that's what happened to me. I went to a party, a dude drugs put drugs in my drink and then next thing you know I'm in my I'm in Florida and that's how I got into the sex trafficking business and I would be damned to let another child suffer so this is not the end of me Brooklyn Steel this is the beginning. And I'm not going to stop until y'all have better security. Because I cannot sleep at night knowing that y'all have a prostitution ring around your area. That pimps feel comfortable to come to the front door of your concert to pick up pimp, to pick up women. Or probably boys. Who knows? Pick up anyone and sell them for sex. I am not going to stop. I am not going to let what happened to me happen to somebody else's child. This is not the end of me. Y'all done woke up God's child. I am God's child. What goes in the dark is going to come to the light. And I'm going to make sure that the evilness in that place is coming to the light. Even if I lose a lot of sleep at night. Because I can't sleep. That's how I know that there's something crooked going on. Because normally, if it was just me exaggerated, it was just a bad night. Father would allow my spirit to sleep comfortably and I wouldn't wake up and forget and would it the whole day would be like a distant memory. So the fact that I'm waking up and I'm still 
my spirit is still aching and it's still hurting and I still feel still feel like something evil that goes to show that no I was not exaggerate or it was not just a bad day and now I finally feel like now I finally realize why I got rejected because father wanted me to realize wanted me to see exactly what I saw and he wants me to bring y'all built into the light and I am not going to stop until your to the your evilness comes to the light 